Okay, bear with me here. I've got a bunch of acknowledgments because we had a lot of partners um, in, in, this, uh, in this endeavor. Um, so, the staff at James River State Park would like to express our sincere gratitude to the following individuals and organizations for their assistance in this project and their continued support and pre their, their continued support of the park and their preservation of our dark skies. Several people provided letters of support and recommendation that assured the IDA that James River had not only the support and encouragement of the astronomy community, but local organizations and government agencies as well. Jack Gross, the president of the Blue Ridge Astronomy Club, John Jardine Goss, president of the Astronomy League, Robin Snyder, superintendent of the Appomattox National Historical Park, Tim Palladino, director of planning and zoning, Nelson County, the Buckingham County Board of Supervisors, Planning Commission, and Becky Carter, the County Administrator, Peggy Dixon, the President of the Friends of James River State Park, Molly Ward, the previous Secretary of Natural Resources, and Terry McCullough, the previous Governor of Virginia. We would have also never been able to achieve what we did without the support of our friends in the astronomy community. We'd like to thank the Richmond Astronomical Society and the Crew Astronomy Club who both regularly help the park present educational programming to fulfill some of the IDA requirements and allow park visitors to use their telescopes. Dan Ward, a member of the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club, came to our rescue in the final months of the application process and provided photographs that were crucial to the application. His photos of the night sky at James River State Park are remarkable. Laura Greenleaf and Laura Graham co-leaders of the Virginia Chapter International Dark Sky Association, the Loras helped considerably in the early stages of the application process and then made themselves available for our many questions. They sent a letter of recommendation to the IDA promoting our cause and helped us stay on top of key deadlines. Patricia Rostowski, the volunteer coordinator from the Northern Virginia Piedmont region of the IDA, helped enormously at the beginning of the process as well and served as a liaison to the Northern Virginia Astronomy Club. The Northern Virginia Astronomy Club, though located a few hours away, has had several members attend sky watches in the park. <coughs> me. And in addition, they have donated several Galileo telescopes to use in educational programming. We're excited to use these, these telescopes in our programs to show the public the importance of protecting our night skies for future generations. Adam Lehman, the park manager of Stanton River State Park, Virginia's first international dark sky park, gave us the benefit of his expertise and our application used Stanton River's application as a template. Jim and Jen Jones, while they were both working here at James River, did an exceptional amount of work to further the park's efforts. Additionally, Girl Scout Troop number 217 out of Lynchburg, Virginia, we want to thank you for your recent gift of the stationary light meter. Um, and that, that, that we're going to install here at the Visitor Center, and for the additional IDA compliant light fixtures that will be coming soon to replace some of the shielded fixtures at our cabins. Last but not least, the amazing staff here at the park is to thank for all their hard work modifying and maintaining the light fixtures and helping to ensure our compliance with the IDA, the IDA requirements. Arranging volunteers to come present educational programming and incorporating dark sky principles into any evening programs we present. Now I'd like to turn the floor over to Tom Smith, the Deputy Director of DCR, for a few moments. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, really inspiring to see such a room full of folks on a cloudy evening when we're here to celebrate the sky. So thanks for everybody turning out. Um, you know, last year my wife and I were uh, at a park and there was a uh, night sky interpreter program going on. So we signed up for that and we went out with a young lady who was the park interpreter. And the first thing she did was tell the story about how she got interested in, in uh, the sky. And that was that she grew up in New York City and not until she was a college student and she went out to a park with one of her college classes and looked up at the sky did she realize what she had not seen for the first 18 years of her life. And she was so inspired that she went on to get a degree and a graduate degree in astronomy. Um, so, um, Laura, you specifically, and, and to all the folks who have helped make this happen, uh, that's just one small example of the kind of impact that you can have on someone's life and to so many uh, folks who will be coming to this park to experience 
uh, this beautiful night sky. It's, it's certainly a resource that, like so many other resources, we've taken for granted over the years, and it's so special that it is getting that significant recognition here. And not only for the folks to be able to come here and experience it, but for the many people who will come here, experience it, learn about the importance of um, the, the stewardship that you can put into place to take care of your dark sky, and then take that back to their home communities, take that back to perhaps a park uh, that's closer to where they live, um, and have an opportunity to realize their own sort of stewardship capacity for this very special resource. So thank you so much. I want to talk uh, just a real quickly about what the resources mean to, to me personally and us as a, as a division of state parks. Uh, this is our, as Tom mentioned, uh, Andrew mentioned, this is our second uh, Virginia State Park, uh, 44th in the country, 64th in, 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 in the world. So we're pretty proud of that. We have embraced dark sky initiatives and we've got multiple parks on the pursuit of the path, the journey. Uh, Jim Jones recognizing back there in the back, smiling like a possum. Natural Bridge, Natural Bridge is coming. Doubt that it's coming, but so we're just now starting to, to realize this resource and it is one of the last frontiers in natural resource management. Nobody laughs, you didn't get the start of the start of it. <laughs> but it's playing a role in, uh, in a lot of our designs and our, in our new construction, our renovations and stuff because we are, we are installing uh, 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 dark sky compliant lighting. We're changing our thought processes on how we lock parking lots and things like that. So we're learning from the efforts from a lot of folks uh, out there. But uh, when, when what it means to me personally, uh, this is my second park in my region. I know, I know the dedication and the commitment and the sacrifice it takes to get this. The thousands of hours, it seems like, the, the application about that thick, all the changing of the light bulbs, the building the shields on the, the, the lighting and everything. And so our most important resource is sitting right here. The staff, the, the volunteers, the folks that have embraced this initiative. And as Tom mentioned, we want them to take, when they come visit us, we want them to take that, take that little bit of knowledge back and what they can do uh, at home in their communities. And we've seen this grow, we've seen this initiative take off exponentially down at Stanton River State Park. Uh, uh, the County of Halifax has adopted uh, dark sky ordinances. They're working with the local communities down there doing a lot of education. And people are thinking differently about the night sky. And we kind of take it for granted in parks. Uh, but we do have state parks. You think these pristine areas, you know, dark sky. We've got a lot of urban parks in and around the metropolitan areas that they don't get to see this, so we're hoping it's also going to drive visitation, and then we get we get them out here. We we, we inspire them, and we get a chance to put our uh, put our uh, hooks into them and educate them a little bit, so that they learn things. But I want to talk about Laura real quick. Uh, uh, this is uh, if anybody in here, she's as true as park ranger uh, than uh, us sitting here. Uh, I've been able to watch this young lady grow up. Uh, she works for us here at the park, at the contact station, come through to always smile. Uh, YCC, like four, four years. Last year I was at Westmoreland. I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to invite me up there to be the, the, the inspiring speaker for the, uh, uh, these young ladies have been out three weeks building trails and all kinds of things. I volunteered her time and uh, she, she won a pretty prestigious award. Uh, uh, last year, the Emmy Award. So it's self. Uh, uh, all the all the counselors and the and the folks uh, they vote on it, and so they could have picked any of the any of the dozen uh, young ladies over there. They picked her. Uh, so not only did they see something in her, uh, same things that we see in her every day. She's going to Virginia Tech. Uh, we hope that one of these days, you know, we're all getting a little thin and getting a little bit older. But, uh, we've got folks in the wings like that are going to step up and, and take over the next uh, operation of stewardship of this. But we have some small, we have uh, some small tokens of appreciation that we would like to give Laura and also her mother uh, 
for um, you know behind every uh, behind every good husband and every good child, there's a, there's a good mom somewhere that uh, that makes sure that, uh, that they they rally them, they pick their lift their spirits up, they keep them on task. So uh, this is as much your recognition as it is uh, it, it is uh, your daughter. But we want to thank you. We've got a couple of small um, gifts that we'd like to give you. So let's let's say both of you come up here. So I'm going to read it for everybody uh, that so you, that you uh, and then get a chance to come take a look at it. it says, Thank you for your hard work on the James River State Park International Dark Sky Park application and your dedication to preserving our night nice skies. Uh, first one is Valerie Callahan, April 5th, 2019, and then it's got a really cool quote on here from Stephen Hawking, and uh, I'll read it uh, verbatim. Remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes a universe exist. Be curious, Stephen Hawking. So we want to tell everybody. Whoa, whoa, don't, don't yell. <laughs> we want to be. A, we're so proud of this. We want to tell everybody about it. We have got uh, right here. We we've got a sign, and we we didn't know if it was going to be raining and all that kind of stuff. So this is an inside an, an initiative today. So. We would like for you to do the honor. refreshments and then the crew of astronomy club is going to be presenting um, their indoor program because it doesn't look like that hole in the cloud is going to be big enough to look through with a telescope. Now there is a large group obviously I don't think it all fit in a small back room here so we did bring uh, three parts of the program that sometimes we do run and so we can do a telescope presentation out here with a third of the group uh, my wife can do one that she does with smaller children, and then I can do the presentation, and we can rotate if you want to do that one. Yeah, that would work great. That way everyone can rotate. Yeah. 